for many people and it's a happy time for me too but i'm gonna get into the story uh thanksgiving has a lot of, uh meaning to a lot of people but as my, one of my favorite rappers Karis once said it's called it could be called thanks taken too okay and the reason he said that was if you think about it 50 million native americans 50 million were killed over a hundred year period to build this nation and uh, I just find it really sad that if you look at both sides, uh, it brings families together, but it's also sad you don't see Native Americans anymore. And another thing too, that being an animal lover, how to kill millions of turkeys, it just bothers me that you can celebrate any type of holiday, like tearing out, um, cutting out Christmas trees and saying, it's just saying like it could be more a way to preserve life and celebrate. Um, anyway, moving on. So anyway, but a good note is, Tomorrow makes 40 years since my first love, Debbie, and I took her to my family's house um, on Thanksgiving. And I'm gonna get to the point who Debbie is. Like the old classic movie, Citizen Kane, I saw it years ago, but it makes sense. It's like, everything is like a headline life. Most people don't meet in between the lines. So I'm just what I'm trying to do with my videos. So Debbie, she was my first love. The first time I saw her was in fourth grade. We, in fourth grade, they had tables, like four in, in the, people sit at one table. And uh, she sat at my table. And she was really cute, and she's really, like, sort of attention. And she had a lot of personality. And um, I liked her then, then. I liked her then. And my mom was a school teacher at the same school. She was a third grade teacher. I remember one time, since, uh, I got something to talk about. I wasn't a bad kid, but I was still on the principal's um, death, um, the, the bench. And her class came by, and my mom was a teacher. She saw me sitting there. And the whole class said, ooh, you gonna get it? And I, I just bring back memories. But another thing about Debbie that was really important to me in fourth grade, I, I truly believe in Santa Claus. I'm a big skeptic now, but I really believe in Santa Claus. And uh, she sat at her table, she told me, oh, it's not Santa Claus. And uh, I remember I asked my dad, and this one, I had problems with my family, because it, it's just like, your dad, he, he know how much I believe in Santa Claus, but he, he just he said, matter of fact, after you believe in it for nine years, this is how you did it. I'm like, Dad, some girl in my classroom said there's no Santa Claus. Uh, is that true? And he said, yeah, that's true. And I'm like, you had no, it was just like, just blunt. But anyway, moving on. So um, after fourth grade, I didn't see Debbie. Then somehow or another in junior high school, uh, my name is Stu. So Stuart, Stu, I like Stu for short. And uh, somehow my name came up. She knew somebody and must have mentioned my name in a different school. And uh, the girl gave me Debbie's phone number, so I called her in junior high school and I talked to her on the phone for an hour, but I was scared to keep talking to her like on a regular basis because I was still nerdy, you know. And so I put the number away and I knew it was there. And then like um, time went on, on, on. Almost like two years later, I just got courage. And for some reason I was cleaning my closet and I saw the number, I just called her. And she was still like, oh yeah, 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 what happened? And so I lost the number, I'm sorry. So we hooked up and this was, this was um, we was in high school then. And I went by there and just playing the music, Curtis Blow, classic, rap classic, and, um, these sort of breaks. And uh, she made me so happy. And then we, we hanging out for a couple of times from her house. And then one time I went by her house, she had a guy there. She didn't even tell me. I guess I must have irritated her or something. And I was ready. I was ready to, he, he didn't even look tough. I was ready to beat him up or something. But anyway, it was, it, I wasn't a tough guy, but it just made me mad that. And then, so that, that, that kind of ended right then. And then by fate, deja vu, whatever you want to call it, I was on the L train and I was getting off and she's coming on. In Philadelphia, and I was like, "Whoa, Debbie!" And we hooked up again. So I said, "Listen, right before Thanksgiving." So we talk on the phone constantly. I said, "Why don't you go to my family's house for Thanksgiving?" So my stepmother's mother uh, prepared dinner. So my dad, my two sisters, Michelle and Dana, and my adopted brother Stevie. He was real small then. So we went by there Thanksgiving. I had a park in the middle of my hair. Like you ever see uh, the Manny Mo and Jack? The um, I don't know if it's still got It's like an older shop place. I had a part right in the middle, so I thought it was kind of funny. I was always different. I always, I always felt like I didn't want to be a copycat, and I still don't feel that way. That's all I am now. But anyway, so I bumped into her, and then we had a good time, and uh, she was so happy. So she actually let me. We was kissing in the back seat. My dad's driving her back home, and uh, he. It was. I thought I was totally in love. You know what I mean? And then uh, we took my siblings to uh, to see Santa Claus, uh, the, the Gallery Mall, and that was a really magic moment. And I was still a virgin. And I was 18, I was a freshman in college, I mean, you know. So we was kissing and making out, you know, in the kitchen in her um, house, like a three-story house. She, she she wasn't ghetto or nothing, she had a nice, her family was really nice, her mom had like a really distinct voice, she was really sweet to me, the father was really nice, 
he's so quiet. But the point is that I, I was kissing, kissing her, and I was getting really worked up. And it's been 18 years being a virgin, and uh, I think she was ready too. And she was like, "Look, Debbie, can we just go down in the basement?" And she said, "Oh no, no, my mom's upstairs." So I'm like, "No, no, no, she ain't got to wash nothing. I'm just, I need to go down in the basement with you." And she was like, "No, no, no, it's gonna be another time. You know, it'd be better. We go to the hotel, blah 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 blah." And that never happened. And uh, she was definitely my first love. I wish she did. And the guys I remember different things with Debbie. And I remember you having a snowball fight outside. We just had so much in love, like being young and love, and it just felt good. But what happened was, I was in college. And I was already cell phones. They had pay phones. So I called Debbie in the pay phone. I saw my buddies in the hallway. So I'm talking to her like, all oh, like a young guy, like, yeah, what's up, Debbie? Yeah, my Bozak. And then I was acting all silly. And Bozak is like a slang for your private. And then um, she was very mature. She was, so she that ended pretty much. So I almost came close to having a new small virginity in college. There was this girl, she was real ugly, and uh, I didn't care, you know, because I, I just started drinking 40 ounces for the first time and whatever. And so I somehow, I'm real silly, and I talked to her, and I got her back to my dorm room, and she was, uh, I mean, she's so ugly, like, if you're going on a date to the zoo, you know, you have a hard time bringing her out, you know what I mean? So I was just like, you know, I was sitting there, and the lights were down, and I didn't even want to look at it. I was just ready to lose my virginity. And she said, hold on, hold on. And you too. I said, okay, okay. So she said, yeah, 40 ounces of drinking, drinking. Come on, drink up, drink up, drink up. And then finally, I was, I mean, I was not date rape or nothing like that. I was like, just like anxious. And then finally, she took on the clothes off and underwear. And I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And I was ready. And she said, hold on. You're just too aggressive. She said, I, I make that do it later. I said, no, 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 no. Please don't leave me. And I was so anxious. And she's like, no, you're just trying to get some. I said, yeah, that's the whole point. That's the whole point. I like, so I didn't, I didn't get a chance then. And then uh, I made off a sheet that stuff written down with me in the lunch. And then um, I was just kind of wild. I remember I was the only freshman in the public speaking class. And I remember, it's a little funny to me. Uh, the sign was just something I did totally opposite. And it's a term called kicking the bucket. That's when people commit suicide. And that's what I said. And the whole, you got to imagine, I'm a freshman. The whole class is like upperclassmen. And they said, okay, it's your turn to do public speaking. So I went up there at this thing and say, uh, term, I missed on the, and I said, when you kick the bucket, when people did that, they would kick the bucket and they would hang themselves. And then the teacher looked at me like, and she failed me. So I was going, it was wilding out. So I just said, you know, I don't need to be in college. So I saw something called the Good Ship of Hope. I, I think I saw it in the magazine. And I've, I've always wondering about things and wanting to do things different. And they said, you could travel around the world and all you could do is go on this ship. And uh, uh, I told my dad, and uh, he, he was like, okay, that's what you want to do. You want to go back to college? Said, no, 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 no. I'm going to work on the ship and go travel around the world, blah, blah, blah. So it's in New York. So he 